Good evening. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Mwoko, and thank you so much for joining us on this cold Tuesday. Today, I'm joined by a woman farmer to discuss all things farming, of course, but most importantly, farming in a cooperative. She's currently uh, the owner and founder of Matubela Farming Enterprises. And it's also great to meet and connect with women in the agri industry because there's so few of us and we're all in our individual corners um, in, in, in South Africa, you know, pushing our farming enterprises. So if you've been thinking about farming, and wanting to go into farming, but most importantly, go into farming with a group, forming a cooperative. I think this conversation is for you as we will definitely learn a lot from Impileng Squadi's uh, uh, journey within her farming career. And like I say, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, please share, like, and comment on the farming podcast because this podcast is for you. We're here to attend to all your farming needs, all your farming questions, and most importantly, bring you into the farming or agricultural landscape, but most importantly as well, grow your agribusiness. So please, if you have any comments or questions for our guests tonight, please feel free to um, tap, uh, write your question in the chat box and we'll, be, uh, we'll make sure that we answer your question. And um, yeah, without further ado, I'd like to bring Ipileng onto the show. Ipileng, how are you doing? And thank you so much for joining the Private Property Farming Podcast. Thank you, Mbali. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Awesome. It's I'm such doing... an honor to be part of this show. <laughs> That's fantastic. Awesome. I'm doing well. Thanks. Um, Ipileng, I think I just want to start off with your, your journey. How did you get into farming and, and why? The most, in quest, most important question. Look, I grew up in a family where they are farmers and on weekends, each and every one of us has got the responsibility within the farm. So I grew up with this passion and the love of being in the industry, just observing in the family that there is a business structure we need to learn so that whenever the parents are no longer allow, uh, uh, around, we can be able to go on with, with the family business. Mm. Awesome. And so you grew up in a farming background uh, or in a farming, in a family that farms. When did you start your uh, cooperative and what is it that you're farming? From the family cooperative, we are producing quality Bonsmara cattle. We raise them, we breed them, and then we sell to the market. So basically the business, it's all about selling cows. And we've got an agro-tourism site where the farm is surrounded by the dam. And on weekends, people are coming for entertainment. They come fishing. So, yeah, basically, those are some of the things that are happening within the farm. Right, Ipileng. I know that uh, Bonsmara cattle is quite a popular breed in the South African agricultural context, most importantly so because it is a breed that is found in South Africa. What are some of the pros and cons of raising Bonsmara cattle? Look, uh, Bonsmara cattle, it's very easy because it adapts to the situation, to the climate. And right now it's winter. You just need to manage your plan so that you, you know, right now the, the grass does not produce enough nutrients for the cows. So you need to come up with a supplement plan so that you can be able to feed the cow, cows and supplement them. So Bonsmara cattle, it's very lovely to, to, to keep because they've got a very good mother ability to their cows and they produce a good milk. And the most important thing they are for meat, they can produce meat. Wow, fantastic. And I think I missed uh, where you're based. Where is your, car your farm currently based? And you did say that you're farming in a cooperative. How many members are involved in your cooperative at the stage? We are farming in Brett, Scamiel Drift. Uh, we are five in the cooperative. It's a family cooperative. Mm. There are three women and two males. Mm. So why did you decide to... Uh, maybe uh, keep the business as a cooperative instead of a private company-owned family business? 
it becomes easy for the government to fund cooperatives. Remember, it's not easy to fund individually. So at least when people are working in groups, the government is able to, to, to identify their needs and try to help. So it's very easy in a cooperative because even when you buy the feed, like we are in a livestock uh, production, when you buy the feed, it's become very easy because you buy, you buy in bulk, unlike when you are individual. So yes, everything is done in a common. All right. And so I know in a private company, right, you obviously have directors with each of their own shareholder um, shareholding capacity. How is, it, is, how is that different in a cooperative? So, for example, does, in a cooperative, does every single member own equal share of the business? Can you enter and exit the cooperative whenever you like? Um, how do you also maybe distribute responsibilities in a cooperative? Okay. In a cooperative, you need to be very strict. You need to put everything in paper. And each and every person must have the rules. Like any other uh, business, you must have executive committee where one will be responsible for finance, the other one will be responsible for the meetings and whatever. There is a chairperson that will be needed in a cooperative. Because in a cooperative, you cannot just do as you please. You need to have uh, the constitution that is going to lead you in in the vision and the mission of the business. Okay, and how how easy or difficult is it to be working with family? You know, um, I'm sure, you know, with siblings you have those fights, but more so when you're in a business and have, you know, priorities and responsibilities to manage over and above just the cattle, but the employees as well and funds. How difficult or easy is it to be in a cooperative, especially one that is family, um, that, that involves family members? Yeah, I think compared to other cooperatives, family cooperative, it's much better because my dad is the chairperson in our cooperative. He manages everything. And yes, we do fight. Each and where there are two people, there are differences. So we do fight, but at the end of the day, we sit down with our vision and see what we can do. But sometimes, yo, know, it's a challenge because when you go home, you had a fight with your you, with your brother at the farm, and now you get to sit down and sort out everything. But remember, at the end of the day, you are running business, so you yeah. need to put your differences aside and work together. So yeah. you need to discipline. Yes. Right. So going back to our topic of this evening, still on speaking on cooperatives, what are the minimum uh, numbers of members that are in, uh, required to be in a cooperative? And, um, you know, what's the initial investment amount? So, for example, if for, for people that are watching and listening tonight and are thinking, I'd like to farm, but I can't go in it alone. And maybe my family's not interested in farming, but I know people that want to farm and let's form a cooperative. What's the minimum amount of members that is involved in a, that needs to be in a cooperative? Um, and, um, you know, do, they, do, the, do the members have to give equal share in investment um, or initial capital when starting the cooperative? How does it just work? Look, from a minimum number five above, you can start a cooperative. But remember, in a cooperative, you cannot be all the same. There's one with passion, there's one who's just full of playing, there's this other one who's not serious, he's just there to make money. And remember in farming, you cannot just make a quick cash. Uh, it doesn't happen like that. You need to be patient. So in a cooperative, uh, people are different. It depends on how many you, you brought to, 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 to the cooperative, then you can share equally. Uh, there are people who just put little. So do, you'll have to divide and each and every person must get what she or he contributed to the to the cooperative. Mm -hmm. So like I said, it needs discipline. Right. And how do you manage non-performing members in a cooperative? Because I've heard stories throughout my farming career where people have been in a cooperative, let's say there's 10 or 15 women in a cooperative, and maybe only five or six are really active uh, or actively involved in the business when it comes to physically having to plant or raise the cattle. And then once the funding comes along or the support from a private institution or a government entity, every single member comes in and just acts like they're serious. So how does one manage the, the members that are non-performing in a cooperative? Look, uh, in a cooperative, remember you are in business, like I said, 
And each and every person needs to 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 work hard to make the business a success. So yeah. there are people who will be not attending the meetings. Look, everything is in black and white. You need to put everything in black and white, like the the the, the constitution. In your constitution, you need to discuss such things that what is it that you can you're gonna do to people those who are not at attiring to to the rules. I mean, you've got the right to remove one who's not working in a cooperative and see what you can do because you cannot function with someone who's not serious. Remember some people will be coming very actively uh, to be part of the cooperative, but as time goes on, you realize that these people, they've changed. If they thought that that farming just come easy, but then they discover along the journey that farming is not easy. Then the next time that person does no longer active. You need to go back to the constitution and look at your rules and regulations and see how you can deal with that person. Just follow each and every step of how you're going to remove that person from the cooperative. Wow. If you're joining us this evening on the Farming Podcast, uh, we're joined by Ipilen Kwadi, um, who is the founder of Matsubela Farming Enterprises. She's a livestock farmer based in the Northwest, particularly farming Bonsmara cattle. And our topic this evening is all about farming in a cooperative. And so far, she's just shared some wisdom uh, based on how a cooperative is formed, the, mem- the minimum numbers of members that need to be part of a cooperative. And she's just shared also her, her background as to how and why her family came about to starting a cooperative and also um, highlighted certain roles and responsibilities that is required from certain members in a cooperative to achieve. If you have any questions for Ipileng this evening, please feel free to comment and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. But sticking on the cooperative um, uh, uh, topic this evening, Ipileng, I just want to find out as well. Um, so in a cooperative, do you share the profits equally? Because it's, again, you know, there might be members in a farm, in the, in the cooperative who say, I'm passionate about farming. I want to be active. Therefore, I'm active from a production level. I'm active from a marketing level, going out and seeking clients. But there, there might be members in a cooperative that are not so active, you know, that um, feel that maybe their roles and responsibilities are best served from an administrative level. Now, what happens when the business is performing well and generating all this revenue? How do you then split the revenues or is it based on the amount of roles and responsibility that you have or is it based on purely how active you are in the cooperative it depends on your your mission and the vision for the business remember in our family cooperative uh, initially we have agreed that we're going to work hard so that each and every one of us must get the farm we can be able to buy a farm for, for each and every one of us so now that is our vision so even if we could be working very hard, we know that at the end, we need to buy at least five farms so each and every one of us can be able to work on his or her own. But mm-hmm. yes, each and every month, there is a, set, a certain amount that we contribute to each and every one of us just to gain mm-hmm. confidence. You see? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned something quite important uh, earlier on in our conversation, Ipiling, that you as a family, you decided to be in a cooperative because it's better to get assistance, especially from government, um, where you have to do price negotiations and buying. What current assistant are you, assistance are you getting uh, from your, uh, your local um, uh, Department of Agriculture in the Northwest? Look, uh, in farming, we learn every day. So we keep on learning our mistakes. Initially on the cooperative, uh, some of us were working for the government. Some of us were doing what. So as time goes on, then we learn that, oh, people who are working for the government, they don't get funded. Now, like I myself, I was a teacher. So I had to resign so that we can at least get the funding. So. So we are still working on that as we are learning each and every day. But the government is doing so well, especially the Northwest government. Mm. They are assisting when it comes to the break of, of the um, diseases or something. They do share. Like now uh, it, we, we are going through the pandemic of COVID. We, do, we did get the COVID relief. So, yeah, basically the, uh, the government is working, especially the ARC. They are so helpful because they are the one who just got us the, 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 the our market. So the ARC team, it's it's so it's so precious to our business. So the government it is working. 
Yeah, please maybe dive deeper into that, Ibilang, because, you know, we we always hear farmers just saying the government is not supporting, um, you know, we're trying in so many ways and initiatives, but we're not receiving any support from government. But you are highlighting something very positive here, that especially where farmers always complain to say, we don't have access to market, we can't find market, or we can't keep market for long. So let's just highlight on that, that you said that the ARC has assisted you and facilitated that market. Um, so where were you before ARC came in and where are you now that ARC has um, facilitated or helped you with market? Before the ARC came in assistance, we were struggling, you know, going to the auction, the market, uh, you know, it was so tough. It was so tough. But after the ARC came in assistance, they managed they managed to secure uh, the market because we are supplying wet with our free range cows. So yeah, we, we are in a program of, of Willis farmers. That's fantastic. So uh, is Willis buying your beef directly from the farm? And how have you had to uh, transition as a cooperative to meet a retailer's a retailer's demands? It's quite impressive because we are really happy. Uh, we know we've got the market. We are no longer struggling like others. What we have to do is to just to make sure that we meet the deadline. So, yeah. yeah. So if I understand correctly, you're raising the bones matter cattle it's, uh, and supplying directly to Willie's avatars. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Yes. And, 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 and what... What type of um, did 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 that you um, as a cooperative supplying into into Willie's? Did it have to involve any form of structural changes within the cooperatives? Uh, in the cooperative, maybe each member's responsibilities, you know, being increased because I know retail can be quite demanding with very very high standards. Yeah, uh, it, it was a wake up call to the cooperative that we really need to stretch in working hard, making sure that we meet our deadlines. So being we didn't want to disappoint Woolies with our products. We have to make sure that we produce quality meat. Uh, our cows, uh, they are taken care of well. And yeah, in terms of any other challenges, my father is still the, the chairperson of the cooperative. He, he's the one who, who just sit around and manage everything. Mm -hmm. Last two uh, questions, Ibiling. Are you currently mentoring any farmers who uh, want to be in a cooperative um, or have you mentored any farmers who wanted to be in a cooperative and now are successfully running their own? Yes, um, actually from the office of the Premier, there is a program that I'm running. I'm one of the mentors wow. and we have adopted about 80 young farmers in the Northwest province where we are mentoring them, taking them each and every step, showing them the practical work, and we are introducing them to the new facilities of farming, coming with the trainings and everything. So being in a cooperative, we, uh, the government always encourages people to work together. The only way to complete the full value chain in the agriculture is to work together. So whether in the cooperative we fight, somebody doesn't pay, somebody runs away with the money, but at the end of the day, we need each other. And we must yeah. settle our differences, yes. Yeah, and, and it's so interesting that you're mentioning that you're mentoring young individuals, whereas the general conversation in Agri is that there are not a lot of young individuals who are participating in the sector. Um, what is your viewpoint on that? You're a young person, um, and especially that you grew up in a family-run farm and you quit your um, your day job to, to, to join the family cooperative. And most importantly, now you're giving back to young farmers. I mean, just maybe give us, give us, give us an overview of, you know, the participation of young people in the sector, especially those that you're mentoring. You know, I'm so excited to say as you go through the social medias, you'll see that there are a lot of young people who are active in the industry. And those people, sometimes they will be taking just pictures with the goals, but we, we need to identify those people that these people need trainings. They need to do the right thing. We need to take them in board and show them direction. But look, guys, with this as a little bit of experience that we have in the industry, this is what we have to do. Like currently I'm visiting this month as a plow back to the community. I'm visiting the high schools where they are, they are doing agriculture. What, by doing that, uh, I, I want to, to adopt those learners 
and help them to to apply so that they don't have to make the same mistakes that we did. We're going to help them in applying for for, for agricultural uh, colleges, help them to choose the right careers where we know if we have certain group that will be doing the health, other that will be studying the soil. There's a lot of science in agriculture and we need those young people. We need to share the direction with them. So if we get them fresh from high school, we can help them with the direction and they can go to the colleges with the knowledge that this is what I'll be doing. So I'm so happy that not only in the Northwest province, everywhere in South Africa, there are a lot of young farmers who are flooding into the agriculture sector. It shows that people are vibrant. We are realizing our wealth to, 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 yeah, to interact with nature. <laughs> that is awesome, Ipiling. And I can just see and feel the passion coming from you, uh, especially when you're talking about young individuals and being a young farmer yourself. But just to close off the conversation this evening, and thank you so much for availing your time as a busy farmer. Um, what are some of the last or final words of wisdom that you could give to our audience this evening that is maybe contemplating of being in, uh, in a cooperative but just doesn't know how to go about it? Well, you need to be patient. You need to be humble. In farming, money doesn't come easy. You need to create the network. Networking is very important. In farming, we need one another. Therefore, it's very good that we create the networks and share experiences and then work because at the end of the day, we want to create a positive full value chain uh, where we won't be only having people only on the animal. Look, we need people as well in the game industry and there are less people in the game industry. So we are looking forward to growing up to the game level where we'll be having the livestock producers, young vets and... So basically what I'm saying is that we need each other. Let's just work together. Wow, thank you so much for your time, Ibileng, uh, this afternoon. And I'm sure we'll be watching you in our socials uh, from the private property team. And thank you so much as well for just uh, sharing some words and wisdoms and also bringing um, the spotlight into Matsumela Farming Enterprises in terms of how you guys are structured, how you're working and highlighting um, you know, the benefits of working with government as well and just sharing your story because not a lot of farmers are, are able to share the story and sometimes feel hesitant about you know giving some insights into their farming backgrounds but thank you so much for this time this evening and i wish you all the success with supplying and meeting your clients demand and just growing the fa the family farm uh, um, most importantly yeah so thank you thank you so much mbali it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching everybody at home. Um, we were joined by Ipilen Kwadi, uh, who's the CEO and founder of Matsubela Farming Enterprise. She is a livestock farmer farming born smarter cattle, cattle in, in the Northwest province. And I think our conversation tonight was basically uh, uh, um, uh, looking at farming in a cooperative and in, in her instance she was farming or she is currently farming in a family run cooperative with her father and her siblings and each and everybody in the cooperative has their own responsibility so if you're thinking about joining a, a cooperative please watch this um, uh, conversation that we had with Ipileng this evening maybe you could get some gems from what she had to say and I like the fact that she mentioned that a lot of youth are in the sector and also as she is growing in a farming journey, she's always giving back and imparting knowledge on others and constantly working with her active Department of Agriculture in her region and province. As you heard, she's currently mentoring 80 young uh, uh, farmers in the sector. So yeah, it's, so all, it's always so fascinating to talk about farming and agriculture, and most importantly, sharing the spotlight on women in farming or young people in farming. And yeah, if you enjoyed this conversation, give it a like. Like, give it a share and I will catch you Nick on Thursday uh, with another guest but thank you so much for joining the private property farming podcast and continuously supporting the podcast have a good evening take care